Hi, this is Ed from Exotic Blanks. Today's video is going to be uh, a tutorial on turning handmade pen blanks. Uh, obviously, they're not that much different from commercial pen blanks, but uh, some things that I've learned over the years that uh, will help you so that you don't blow up blanks. Um, follow along, and I think you'll see the logic of each of the things that are slightly different from normal procedures. For today's video, I'm using one of the feather blanks produced for us by John Underhill. Um, I do this because I really like John's work and because it's easy to show the feet, the things that I want to show here. First is uh, clean out the tube. Uh, in this case, John rarely has anything in the tube, but it's a good practice anyway to see if there's anything in there. If you look inside, the stuff clear, either the uh, polyresin or the alumilite or anything else that might be in there dries clear. So you're not really going to see it unless you try to take a knife and peel it out. If you don't peel anything out, that's wonderful. That means that it was clean to begin with. Now put your bushings in. When you put the bushings in, you will confirm the size of the blank. You'll confirm whether it's actually a junior or a, a barren or whatever size it's supposed to be. It's a good step even if you're going to turn between centers. Um, there's nothing lost by putting in a set of bushings and finding out for sure that everything fits well. This will also tell you if there's any goo left in the uh, tube because the bushing won't fit properly. So next thing you're going to do is put it on the lathe and uh, and actually turn it. Now you'll notice that in this procedure I do not face the blank before I put it on the lathe. I will face it later, but I see no reason to face it in the early part because you're taking off more plastic or resin or whatever and uh, you're increasing the chances of messing up the blank by putting conceivably a dull pen mill against it. it just doesn't seem to me that there's any good logic to that so I don't do it at the beginning uh, I turn the pen down to the size that it's very close to a finished pen and then we'll work on how to face it so that it's square when we put it together when you're turning it it really doesn't matter whether it's square or not particularly in the early stages later yes there are some reasons why you would want it to be square but um, the early stages, all you're doing is taking off material. Uh, as you can see, I'm getting it off in ribbons, but that's not difficult. Um, we're going to have a couple of minutes of turning here, so uh, I'm going to take the opportunity to talk a little bit about sanding and sanding uh, particularly handmade blanks or more specifically blanks with anything wrapped around the tube. When you're casting this stuff uh, wrapped around tubes, you are trying to put it on, in most cases, you're putting it under pressure and you're making it adhere the best that you can to the uh, material that's on the tube. But no matter what you do, you've got a couple of different thicknesses there, so there is some affinity for it to come off of the tube. In my opinion, there's no reason in the world why you need to uh, introduce any kind of moisture into your turning process. If you use wet sanding and the water comes down through the side of the bushing and into the uh, end of the pen, you are likely to see separation, or at least you're increasing your odds of seeing separation. There's really no reason why you need to do any kind of wet sanding. Returning to the video, it's time to face the blanks at this point. That is to take off the um, extra that's at the ends of the blank. Uh, each of the ends has got a section there that's clear resin. That has to come off and get us back to the uh, length of the brass tube. What I'm doing here is a twist Sierra, so it doesn't really make a lot of difference. You don't have to be dead accurate. Know what kind of pen you're making and know how far you have uh, how much slop you have available to you. If you're making a click Sierra, the uh, length is critical and be very careful that you don't take any brass off. If you're making a twist Sierra, it doesn't make that much difference. If you take off a little brass, it's not going to ruin anything. As you can see, I'm putting it up against a piece of sandpaper that's turning on my lathe. Um, sandpaper turns around 1000 RPM. Uh, it's about a uh, 300 grit. It's nothing special. It just uh, takes it off and it's very gentle thing is that you're not going to damage your blank with it. Then you put the uh, blank back on the lathe and turn it down to your final dimension. 
Um, that's really not very difficult, and as you can see, it's coming off in ribbons again, and it's pretty simple. Um, not much to that. To continue the thought on uh, wet sanding, I've also been asked about um, putting CA on the ends of the blank to seal them. Uh, that isn't necessarily a bad idea. I don't do it, but that doesn't mean I'm opposed to it. It makes sense to take that blank and put thin CA on the two ends, uh, particularly if you're concerned that when you turn, if you're if you're not real gentle, the force that you're putting on the outside, the resin, can make an attempt to make the um, the resin slip on whatever it is you're turning. In other words, if you've got a snakeskin inside there, the resin will attempt to slip off of that snakeskin if you're putting enough pressure on the resin. I don't put a lot of pressure on it. I have a sharp tool and I use the sharp part and I make the thing cut. But there are took a long time for me to get to that stage. So if you have that problem and your stuff is falling apart or separating at the ends, yes, putting some thin CA at the ends is not a bad plan. Um, we're finished with the pen here, as you can see. We're checking the end measurements with a caliper just to make sure that they look about right. And then it'll move on to sanding. And one of the things I'd like to point out here, I just checked it. Uh, when, we, when I'm actually doing the sanding, the uh, 300 grit takes 28 seconds. So the argument that it's going to build up heat, um, put your fingers underneath there for 28 seconds, and if it turns out that you're starting to feel heat, there's something radically wrong with what you're doing. Uh, 400 grit against there is not going to create heat in that short a period of time. You get to the 600, 800,000, whatever you're going to use besides that, all you're doing there is taking off scratch marks and preparing for your novice if you don't have a buffing system. I did use Novus on this one. Yes, I do have a buffing system, but I thought I'd try one on the uh, on the videos using the Novus product so that you can see that, yes, you can do it without a buffer. It is much easier with a buffer. I will grant you that immediately. So we're in the final stages here, and you can see that the uh, pen is turning into uh, nice looking. The blank is turning into a nice looking pen. Um, it was easy to turn. I love John's stuff, and as a result of that, it's it's uh, you go into it with a great deal of confidence, knowing that what you're going to get is an awfully pretty pen. Um, at the end of this video, I've added something that I haven't done for quite a long time, but it's a list of the things that I hope you understood from this. Uh, the uh, things that are important, the things that I think that you should take away from this uh, video, and uh, post them on your wall if you need to. Uh, you shouldn't need to use water with this stuff. Uh, you shouldn't use your pen mill with it. Um, make sure that you don't have crud in the tube. These are the things that generally I get as phone calls of, well, my pen doesn't work or my... my uh, blank didn't turn out right or it separated or whatever and uh, these things are not difficult uh, the the pens the blanks are very well made uh, and if you treat them with any respect whatsoever you will get a very nice looking pen out of it um, but remember that the guys who make these things put a lot of time and effort into it these these blanks take in some cases half hour 45 minutes for the feathers to be laid down properly and then it takes time to to uh, cast it and it takes pressure pots and it takes all the rest of that stuff so when you come back and say well I think I should get credit for a blank I have to look at it as the manufacturer the guy who made it did everything he was supposed to what did you do to screw it up so please try to take some of this in heart and uh, hopefully we'll all be happier I don't get a lot of complaints about these blanks anyway but uh, I, I really hope that I have helped you to make the blank a very easy pen to make. Thanks for watching. This is Ed from Exotic Blanks. Bye now.